Hi, friends. Hi, lovely friends. <laughs> well, you can see already, we yeah. are pregnant, if you don't know from our videos. Exactly. We are proud parents to be. Yes. We are happy about <laughs> it. And we are talking to you from Oaxaca City, a little outside El Rancho RV Park, for whoever is interested in a nice little campground, or not little, it's really beautiful. Yeah, it's amazing. And we are on the road. Already one and a half a month, more or less. After quarantine. And it's really nice. It's really good to travel right now. We don't have any issues. Some well, places are closed. Some little villages, exactly. But They're all open. good. Yeah. And now we decided to come here to El Rancho RV Park because a lot of friends did their quarantine here and they said it's lovely. Yeah. And guess what? We have a nice friend that we met here again. What a surprise. Look, 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 look who's here. <laughs> Everlander's Adventures. And uh, we're gonna have a nice interview. Exactly. We're gonna show you their rig mm. now, inside out. Jason and Kara are so excited to do this. Yes. They're Canadians, Brazilian, German. It's gonna be an international round. Stay tuned and check out the video. Yes. I am Isabella and I am from Brazil. This is Fabian and he is German. We've been overlanding the world with our home sweet home, Frank the Tank, for the past almost four years. And together with our two lovely dogs, Uni from Spain and Basco from Germany, we are living even for before. Subscribe and welcome to the family. Then here we have our friends. This is Kara and this is Jason. Hello. <laughs> and they are both from Canada. We met them in Baja California, right? First time? Yeah. I think two years ago, one and a half years ago. And yeah, and now we will see the nice truck of them. We actually spent Christmas last year together in nine, I think. Yeah. Yes. And it was a lovely time. And yeah, and we are happy to see them again. To meet yes. up again. Yes. <laughs> Go to the business, see the truck. That's, I know that all of you are ex waiting for that. Before we do this slightly, I have to say, um, this guy here, I mean, you both were working on it, right? Okay. But they built this truck. And I'm not talking about the building, somebody buys a box, somebody puts it on a truck, or like us, we bought it and we left. Mm -hmm. No, this guy, from scratch. He showed me pictures, right? This was your working truck before. Yeah. It was his working truck and it was totally not looking like that. And he built even the box himself, everything inside. I mean, I'm so, I'm so proud of him that, you know, <laughs> I'm excited to, to get the full tour for you guys. Yes. Right, so we built our uh, Overland rig on a 2003 F550. It's got 7.3 liter international turbo diesel, uh, and we've stage two the whole thing. So we've got a 73 uh, millimeter KC turbos, stage two turbo, stage two high pressure injection. And yeah, so the engine is super powerful. I haven't uh, measured it, but it's gotta be up in the 150 plus. So now we're here on the other side and I'm here because for one special reason, these parts, Jason, right? They are not from Ford. Right, so the original body of course is always steel, uh, but we are running 41 inch Continental MPT 81s, 41 inch tall tire plus it sticks out about six inches past what stock yes. wheels would and so to cover our wheels so we don't have wheels hanging out the side of the truck we got this uh, uh, fiberglass body kit which uh, extends these fenders out it's it's not obvious in video but these bulge out six inches past what stock and would light. and light well i actually had them make them triple thick oh okay so oh he bangs his own car they're uh, I would never do that, but it's good. <laughs> they're very strong uh, and they probably weigh about what the original steel nice, fenders nice. would. But they're good and durable. You can have a tree fall across it and it's been fine. So inside the cab here, it's pretty uh, vanilla basic. Uh, it's a base model, so it has rubber flooring. It does have electric windows and AC. And, and what are all those? those I, I've added uh, 
uh, gauges for the engine up the A pillar. So I have our oil temperature, our turbo boost pressure, exhaust gas temperature, AKA pyrometer, and our fuel pressure so that I can monitor uh, some of those more finicky things while driving because nice. those gauges aren't available and originally. And this little box? Uh, that's our high drive programmer. So I can uh, cycle through 16 tunes and uh, increase the engine horsepower and fuel consumption. Oh, like a throttle. Uh, nope. So these are the positions of the codes that I'm running right now. So now we move to another door and Feet. not only that, I see here cameras and a door. So what's up there? Right. About? So we have cameras all the way around our vehicle that uh, use computer vision to process human bipeds, two-legged creatures and four-legged creatures in the night. And it displays it on our inside screen. Uh, if we're in the middle of nowhere, I can enable it such that someone walks by and it pops up on screen that there's somebody outside. So you can see if it's an animal or a guy? Yes. And these this are, is nice. And these are uh, visible light as well as infrared night vision night cameras. Wow. And on the front we have a thermal camera, but nice. that's beside the point. This is our side compartment door uh, where all of our utilities and stuff is. Got some general camp uh, accoutrement here. Our water system is all stainless steel Pepsi kegs. We use pressurized air to dispense our water, so we don't have uh, pumps running when you take just a little glass of water. It goes rrr, 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 rrr. So all stainless steel. Uh, I can segregate them, so if we, we have uh, drinking water, we can keep it separate from our wash water. And should I get any crud or calcium buildup or anything bad in, the, in these kegs, I can open them up, get my hand inside, clean, bleach, and you can also add if you need more. Exactly like right. We are, you know now, pregnant. So if you need more water for the baby or whatever, you just put another keg in. Right. So I bade this compartment uh, with the intention that I would be carrying 10 kegs of water. Ah, okay. Now it's five. Five, correct. Yeah. And that lasts us about two weeks. So I decided that's enough and I didn't add all 10. Yeah. And you have water filter, ultraviolet. Yeah, right. So that's our volcano camp stove. We are very fond of uh, a four stage water filter with uh, block carbon charcoal filters and then a ultraviolet water sterilizer. Down here is one of our air compressors, the Vi Air. On this side on the left is the dual ARB twin compressor. So just again for the people out there, this system is pressurized. So no pump nope. needed. Well, the, the pump is the air compressor. Pump is the air compressor. But I can run that once and it's good for five days. Exactly. So you park and you don't hear anything anymore. Right. And you don't need electric because this one pressures in and it's done. Done. Nice. And then all up here, uh, this is all new actually. All these jumpers are a work in progress for a different video coming soon. But uh, all of these modules I built myself and they are uh, P-channel driver boards much like a relay, you know, a relay clicks yeah. power in and out. Uh, this can do that, but it is solid state, so it can go so fast that I can dim lights. I can show you inside in a bit nice. uh, for light dimming and and all sorts of things. Just to, and just... Uh, the, the big thing is actually charging our chassis batteries. So uh, I can PWM the output to the front batteries to charge it at a lower rate because if I'm making 70 amps of current off the solar and I send that all to the batteries, it's too much, they'll get too hot. So this way I can send it five amps or eight amps or charge at whatever rate I want. So that's one of the next things and you guys will be excited about that. How many solar you have maximum? The wattage? Yes. Uh, 1400. 1400 on this vehicle and we're gonna see that later. It's amazing what he constructed, but more to that. Huh. What I also wanna say, I just can tell you what I'm impressed. We had traveled along, I don't know, two months total on and off. So I realized what we are missing, he has an air conditioner. And not only that, I mean, he th doesn't think it's super duper, but he can talk to his phone and then the air conditioner goes on. Then 
the vent goes automatically up and it's, it's just amazing. You're in there and he just sits and edits or does whatever he wants to and he talks to his phone and the car does everything automatically. It's amazing and he built that himself. So it's not a big company, it's Jason. Nice. Jason Inc. The last thing of uh, noteworthiness in here is our batteries. We have 20 lithium iron phosphate uh, batteries, a total of 11.5 kilowatt hours or 900 amp hours at 12 volts. Uh, we can be in complete forest cover or, or a rainstorm or whatever making zero solar and that's enough battery to last us seven to ten days uh, running our fridge, deep freeze, electric cooktop. Uh, we're 100% electric in the back. We have no propane or external fuel source. And now we walk to the back of the vehicle and the most fascinating things to me personally is that thing. What is it? Das ist Aircon. Das ist Aircon, uh huh. So, this is the mini split, right? You right. Integra he integrated a mini split, 100, maybe you explain. Right, so this is a 120 volt, 8000 BTU forest air mini split air conditioner. Uh, they're intended uh, originally for uh, just a small apartment. You can open your patio door and put it outside, close the door on, on the cable, and put some foam over it and cool a small apartment. But it works very well for our apartment. Yeah, maybe, maybe right here we can just implement showing how he talks to his phone and then it starts inside. That would be amazing. But yeah, this is great. We are actually thinking about that. Oh, what are you doing? Oh. Turn on the air conditioner. Okay, AC on. Did you see that? He talked to his phone and the air conditioner blows. Turn on the fan. Here's some fan action for you. Okay, we don't have to go inside even. It's the phone is with you. I forgot. Oh my God. So awesome. So this is obviously your spare tire. Yep. Everyone gets that. This is the diesel hose. Yep. Understand that. That's where the diesel. Fill the tank. How much liters you have carrying? Uh, 160. 160 liters. Totally enough. This I asked yesterday. I forgot already. That's our directional uh, cellular antennas. Exactly. For good Wi-Fi and everything inside. Right. So our truck, we're all totally connected on the grid when we can be, off grid when we need to be. Uh, but when we're on fringe areas and I still need internet access, uh, I have a mast which lives here, a uh, 10 foot long mast aluminum pole which I can erect with the uh, directional antennas and then we can point at the nearest cell phone tower and get... Uh, nice. I learned a new Canadian word, fringe area, outback, right? Fringe. Fringe, okay. Right. and. Uh, Rounding this out, our max tracks, which I have never ever needed to use yet, and our AT Overland diesel fuel can, which has just that little bit of extra fuel if we need it. And here, those two babies, those, really important, right? Them's are my babies. Uh, that is my three-point pneumatic hold-down system designed by Regan and Taylor. Uh, it uses semi-brake pots as a clamping mechanism, and when I put 150 psi of pressure in there it holds the box to the frame rigidly for highway driving but when we off-road i can vent the pressure electronically vent the pressure so there's no pressure yeah, empty. empty no pressure remaining and then when we're off-roading the frame which will always have a s small amount of twist in it yeah. the frame can twist and the box stays rigid because our box is made from a honeycomb composite panel uh, it uh, it cannot tolerate any twisting. It, it'll fracture, it could uh, fracture the skins, the fiberglass skin. Okay, wow, so, that's nice. I mean, yeah. my box is just flexible, flexible, and I know that when we go on a highway and it's windy, the box is shaking. So with this one, I could just say stabilize. Clamp her down. Yours has rubber bushings, yes. kind of like a spring. It uses the rubber as a spring, and so it has a little bit of give yeah. that way. I've seen yours, but uh, this was, uh, perhaps overkill in hindsight, but it was a good precaution and it's not that expensive. So we talked a little bit about solar already and now we want to show the solar about approximately 1,500 he said fully and what I mean with fully, just look at the roof of the truck, what happens now? Oh my god, uh, so, air pressure right? Correct, we just doubled our solar input. Uh, we have eight 185 watt panels, a total of 1.48 kilowatts of solar, and uh, we originally only just had the four, but uh, in very northern climates or in short uh, 
short days, short solar days, namely Canada in the fall. It's not quite enough power for air conditioning for extended periods or if you're in the uh, Canadian forests, you don't get enough sun sometimes. So you need all of the sun when you get it. And so I built this uh, solar uh, slide mechanism that's uh, on stainless steel slides and stainless pneumatic cylinders that can extend outward. It extends out past our truck about... Yeah, it's an awning too. Yeah, like well, about one foot. On this side... That's all you put lights too, right? Right, so I wanted outdoor uh, lights just for being outside. And so oh, they're, nice. they're not so dramatic in the daylight, but it's a nice warm glow around our camper when we're... And when you want to go, what do you do? Uh, and that's the beauty of this whole thing is I don't often control it manually as I have to just now, uh, but it comes out when we're stationary and the top solar panels are producing electricity. It measures the current and when it's worthwhile, it extends the solar panels and then at night it retracts them automatically. Or if we need to get out of there in a hurry, I go and start the truck. As soon as I tap the brakes, the solar pulls in. Ah, nice. So that it's... So pull it in one more time. It's funny. Woohoo! And ready to go. Nice. Yep, nice. All right, while Jason is preparing the inside, cleaning up or whatever, I mean, look at these details. This is like little LED lights and they're in the frame. We didn't even talk about that. He doesn't want to talk so much about it. But all this is handmade. You don't understand. Like he thought about this little light. He thought about those lights here beforehand. I mean, I don't know, everything is like integrated. The planning phase of this must have been... So now that you guys have seen the outside of this beautiful rig, check out the ladies and the inside. <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> this is really nice. <laughs> Finally, we are in the inside. Yes. And this is what all of you always are waiting to see. It's pretty cool. What do you want to show us first? All right. Well, first we'll start here. We have our bed over cab here. And um, a lot of question we get is, is that enough space? It is. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And under our bed, oh, we nice. have the frilly spring frilly. system, um, which I really like because we don't get any um, mold or condensation under a mattress cool. and a little bit of extra comfort there. And it's a big bed. You know the size? Yeah, we're um, about a double. Ah, it's okay. a little bit bigger because it's a custom mattress that we had made. You can see it actually looks like a, a sailboat shape. Yes. Uh -huh. nice. <laughs> Smaller at the front and larger here. Cool. <laughs> and in the front we have lots of storage, just little bins um, nice. that we can keep our clothes this in. This is like a storage for clothes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, clothes, little extra stuff. And then in here we have some extra drawers. This one's actually a charge drawer okay. where we can <laughs> throw our cell phones in and charge them up. Wow, nice. Uh, I am interested about your kitchen. All right. <laughs> I see that you have induction plates. We do, cool we do. Truck. Yes, we have, like Jason said before, we don't have any propane. We just have induction cooktop, which I love. And then over here we have our sink and um, as Jason mentioned, we have the two water sources. We have our wash water and another uh, tap for our drinking water. Nice. And lots of counter space. Yes. Because I love to cook. Yeah. And I love to eat. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Need lots of space. <laughs> and I like like this space that you have because this is also a door. What mm -hmm. is underneath? So over here we have um, a freezer. And this can be a fridge or a freezer, but I have it set to freezer now, so lots of space for wow. that. And we have really a lot of, oh, <laughs> a lot of space here. They're locked. Okay. So <laughs> Jason designed this amazing system that uh -huh. when he starts the truck and pushes on the brake, all of our doors lock automatically. Oh. So I'll release them. <laughs> Ta -da. Oh wow, a lot of storage. A lot of storage. This is nice. And on the other side of our camper here, we have our dinette area and a little office workstation for Jason. And then below here, we have a fridge. Oh, nice fridge. Yeah, it's really lots of space. Wow. And it does have a little freezer on top, so. Nice. Good. It's a lot of things. It does, yeah. <laughs> and I like also your TV. 
Mm -hmm. It's very cool there. And also works as a dual monitor for Jason um, if he's working or if we're doing video editing, then we have another monitor for that. Okay, this is also a bed if you want it or not? It could be, but right now we have it solid. Okay, yeah. we have fixed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here is more storage. More storage, yes. Nice. We have a ton of storage, <laughs> which I love. So we have just bins in the back. And then if we're going to be doing some more extreme off-roading, we do have the straps that we can add, um, put on here to hold them in. But for the most part, just driving around yeah, town, they the stay. There is like a little here, you cannot mm -hmm. go over it. Yeah. Nice, clever. And then behind me lives our air conditioner, which Jason wow. talked out a little bit about, the Ears. inside part. Mm -hmm. And then in this corner is our composting toilet. Nice compost. Yeah. So what we want for ours in future too. <laughs> we've been really happy with it. We haven't had any issues. We we've enjoyed. We're a little bit skeptical, of course, <laughs> at the start. <laughs> Normal. <laughs> but um, nice. we've been happy with it. And shower? How do you guys shower? And shower. Yeah. When we first did our plans, this whole back area was going to be our, our shower okay and as we started using it because we used it for a couple of years before we went full-time on the road um we just thought it was too much space so we turned it into storage we can always turn it into a shower but right now we have um, an outdoor shower that we okay. use okay nice and our front entrance way can technically serve as a shower as okay. well because it has a shower pan in the base wow. um but we don't yeah, use it for that's that. That's outside everywhere you are, on the beach, mm -hmm. here or whatever. Nice. Yes. <laughs> and one question more that I see. Yeah. Windows. <laughs> windows. <laughs> are and you use it too to live without the windows? I'm used to it, yes. Nice. <laughs> um, so that is a question we get all the time. Why no windows? Yes. And we did have that originally in our plans. We were going to cut in windows. Okay. Um, but we start just using the camper on little uh -huh. weekend trips and we found that we didn't really miss them too much and especially in canada we didn't want a lot of condensation True. and we found that not having windows would help with that yeah. it would keep us warmer and it also keeps us cooler True. Um, when we're running our air conditioner we're more insulated nice. so we thought one day we'd cut them in but it didn't happen and also maybe in the cities uh, people think that you are not a camper yeah then it's, it's easier for you that you can park anywhere. It's right? a it's a little bit more stealthy. We can be in here yeah. full lights on, and as you can see, we have a lot of LED lighting, yes. so it doesn't really feel as closed in with nice. all the bright lights. So nice, cool. And I need to introduce their pet, oh. the beautiful Lincoln. <laughs> Let's take him up, Lincoln. You do. <laughs> oh, <you're Lincoln. laughs> We forgot to introduce in the beginning. Look, this is Lincoln. Lincoln travel with them too. Yes, he's 10 years old and oh. we've been traveling and camping for sure for over 10 years and he's come along for the journey. Yeah, and with this truck, how long are you guys traveling with this truck? Um, we've been full time in it for two years now. Oh, wow. Just about two years. But before that, we had a few years where we were, you know, nice. every yeah, yeah. every weekend, every long weekend that we could. Cool. So. Thank you so much. It's beautiful house inside. It's perfect. Have everything that any person that is full time needs. It's really nice. Thank you. <laughs> In these two years that you told us that you are already traveling with this car, where have you been? So we left Canada and went straight down to Baja because it was cold in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> there where we met them. Yeah. <laughs> and then we spent a winter there and then we went back up to Canada and then we drove all the way to the Arctic Ocean oh, wow. in the summer and then back down to Baja where we met again. Exactly. <laughs> and had our Christmas and then we ferried over together to mainland and then we've been traveling mainland Mexico since then. Wow. Yeah. And, and we're, where the journey will bring you? Well, the plan is Argentina. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll We'll just see how it all unfolds and yes. now that Guatemala is open that's our next step we're going to be heading there cool. in a couple of weeks yeah for us we are still in doubt where the journey will bring us next yeah. <laughs> because of the baby but yeah we yeah. will cross the pass for sure again I'm sure we will somewhere somewhere <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah back in the truck and I heard them talking about is it enough space obviously Lincoln and me have a lot of space here <laughs> right so now we talk with Jason about a little more tricky stuff in here that I think is very important the technology he developed 
developed as a stretch, but okay. <laughs> implemented. Yep. So, Show me some gimmicks. So, as uh, you struggled to get up on the bed, I didn't tell, there is a pneumatic powered step down here. Woohoo! What? Look at that. So this is our accidental storage safe where... Can you push it into? Seriously? <laughs> this is amazing. You guys saw that? This is amazing. Air pressure is a little <laughs> low right now, but... So that does that. Uh, and most of the automation inside the truck I can control by voice. For example, OK Google, turn off the lights. OK. Wow. And now I've likely turned off the lights in half of America's homes, but... <laughs> and look at this, look at this. Hey Google, turn off the lights. Okay. Won't... Oh, oh, it did. She understood it this time. Nice. I love it. Uh, my phone will only recognize my voice, but the uh, Google Home will listen to anyone. Then, but the air conditioner, can I do this? Yes. Or you? Hey Google, turn on the air conditioner. Okay, AC on. Oh and my this God. This is fun. It's, this is stops automatically. This stops automatically <laughs> and the air con goes on and I feel a breeze because I got a little hot here, but now I feel the cold breeze. Thanks. And he is not plugged in. Can you believe that guys? Right. You're right. So, since we're on the topic of that, I'll turn off the air conditioner for noise. Okay, Google, turn on the fan. Here's some fan action for you. So our fan is tied to the air conditioner and the air conditioner to the fan, so that when the fan is on, the air conditioner is forced off, and when the air conditioner is on, the fan is forced off. Uh, so that's what nice. you see there. Uh, but on the topic of power, all of our power can be logged from this app, which I can show you guys and then show on screen also. So you can see our current uh, battery capacity is 82%, the voltage of each of our four banks of cells. And this shows over the last weeks, the green line here shows the our, our state of charge. Ah, so okay. we're always at 70 or 80% here. And the blue and yellow is the solar uh, nice. pr production and red is consumption. So. Uh, this logs all of our power consumption and production. I can also log all of our temperatures in and around the vehicle. So our room temperature, the air conditioner vent temperature, outside temperatures, the temperature of our batteries wow. uh, here, which a lot of people complain saying I need to heat or air condition them. Uh, but as you can see in this red line, it's all good. they fluctuate between 20 and 25 degrees Celsius, which is... So this is the BMS system. Basically, you have it external for you on your phone even. Right, or globally, anywhere in the world. Nice. And I also, you told me before about your, you can now measure your water coming in and out and right. for what you use it. And it's, um, it's amazing. So here is, uh, these numbers aren't accurate yet. Uh, because we just filled and I didn't correct it. But you can see as I flow wash water. The milliliters. The wow. To the milliliter. <laughs> so you actually can control Kara with, hey, don't use so much dishwasher. No, I'm water. not so much worried about that. But when you're traveling long distance and you don't remember if you filled five days ago or 10 days ago, yes. and you've got stainless steel keg that you can't see inside yes. of. So I have to say what I told him before he knows. So for some people, the percentage is enough. Ours has a normal sensor it says 110 percent even it's funny 110 percent german, german i don't know why but when it's full it's 110 and i know when i'm at about 20 percent i need to go refill no but jason for jason that wasn't enough jason he needed to, to know the milliliters level. what he uses and where he uses right you know that it's the sink i know it's wash water or drinking water exactly. and it's not that i needed to know milliliters it's that i need the sensor provides milliliters yeah. and, so it, uh, and yeah. I need to work backwards yeah. into percentage. Nice. I would like that too in mine. Costs about eight dollars. Really? Yeah. Nice. Per sensor. Yeah. I have two, so that's a, a sixteen dollar expenditure. So yeah. I just that tell that while the while the camera is rolling, I don't know if he's gonna put that in or not. I can confirm not. <laughs> what the milliliters? What? Well you leave tomorrow, don't you? Uh, uh, the oh. sensor in our truck. No, I'm not talking about no. the sensor, I'm talking <laughs> about the air conditioner setup. He's going to be, whenever you see something on my channel, when I touch the, the matter of air conditioner, you can be sure that I'm talking with this guy. 
before, <laughs> after, while I'm doing. I don't know where I'm doing it in Mexico, in the United States, in Germany, in Europe. We have no idea, but he's gonna be involved either way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so you saw on the outside there we had those eight channel driver boards that said In Todd We Trust. Those I custom built about three weeks ago to con those are the what's actually doing the work of controlling all this stuff. I used to have mechanical relays, but I've uh, built those and replaced it. And that allows me to dim oh, wow. dim lights to any possible variable between zero and one hundred percent. Nice. Can you change wow. the color? Uh, no, these are white. Okay. okay. These are actually not too, uh -huh, but very expensive lights that have a very accurate color okay. for filming indoors yes. and, yeah, and, and when, to be honest whenever we had parties in here i mean party hangouts yes. <laughs> i never and sometimes in in rigs i get this this headache from the light here no i don't get any yeah. i can i can sleep here i mean you mm -hmm. see you know. <laughs> it's pretty cozy in your guys beds <laughs> so yeah uh, we can control a lot of the automation stuff with phone but for the quick and easy uh, oh stuff, God. I have this, this cheapo wireless keyboard that lives here. Cheapo, we don't have any of those. It's $19. Yeah, we still don't have it. And lights on, what? lights off, solar, retract, uh, deploy. It's in. Yeah, uh, it's in? I don't know. It's in. I was going to say that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, inverter uh, is on. I can turn inverter. You need to have inverter. this joke in there. <laughs> we'll see if she makes her in. Inverter on. Anyway, that's wow, all uh, handled this. there. Yeah, and this drawer I'm very proud of. Uh, it's connected to 12 volt power all the time. And then I've got 10 amp, 5 volt regulators, and every possible USB connection ever, as well as wireless charging for our phones. I can just throw the phone there and. Uh, there's pads for two phones and get them all charged up. Our gimbal batteries, Kara is using everything that's uh, USB rechargeable. Nice. Perfect. Very cool. Plug in and uh, in the morning it's all charged up. Nice. And when you drive it, it's done open? No, there, if you try. Uh, there's about five pounds of oh, yeah. force needed to yeah, pull okay. against them. Well, uh-huh. And, and they're soft clothes, they're called, yes. and, and that holds them in. Uh huh. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah. And that concludes the inside tour. Nice. Thank you so much, you guys. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Now you can leave and I can have a nap. Right. <laughs> see ya. When you see ya. <laughs> so, hi, guys. Thanks again, Jason and Kara, Thank for you this guys. lovely tour of your rig. Um, yeah, Jason and Kara are not only YouTube buddies, we are also friends. Spend a lot of time together, thanks again. And yeah, follow them on YouTube, Everlanders. And by the way, Jason helped us out with the new membership on YouTube. Yeah. So there's a new thing, so look around, there's some join in buttons or something. Yep. If you like that, you know, just do that. And yeah, thanks again. Hopefully we see you guys on the way down to South America, to Europe. Yep. Still trying to convince those guys to come to Europe. It's not that bad, <laughs> you know, we will see. So see you when we see you and take care. Thank you. Thank you, bye bye. Yeah. <laughs>